to pick, of course, because they took the Zillion. Well, you know, they left it open, and uh -huh. possibly on purpose by OMG. Remember, they focused two jungle bans last time. It was a Rengar and a Lee Sin. Janna, this time around, banned by OMG. Starhorn banned that in game one, so switching up in the bans. Now, this time around, they could leave Lee Sin up because it's a very strong pick for Loveling, but also, even in the last set that Royal Club played, Insect looked like he started to sort of lose confidence in that champion and even picked uh, Jarvan over Lee Sin in the last game when it was left up for him. Yeah, I think that surprised pretty much everyone yeah. when he actually went that direction. And they do leave it yeah, off. Maokai, the final ban here for OMG, which has been one that they've banned quite a lot, actually, Ooh, of OMG. Hey, we are going to see those Zillion banned out. Lee Sin, as you predicted there, Kobe, first pick for Lovely. So we'll maybe see a Kha'Zix this time around for Insect, or maybe he'll go straight back to that Jarvan. Uh, top two picks for him. It's left but the Thresh open for zero as it's, well. It's also left up the Janna, which yeah. is almost even more important versus. Oh, Janna was banned. Oh, oh, never mind. Janna was banned. Yeah. You're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, so Thresh and Lucian. So taking that away from San. This is a big deal because San has by far got the best stats with Lucian. Outside of that, it definitely gets a lot more shakier. So this is a good start for Stalin Rogla. Yeah, uh, he definitely relies on that champion to uh, bolster his laning phase performance. But Uzi taking it away is going to be great for them. As we said, he's got a tremendous amount of games on that champion in their regular season. This also will probably mean uh, Cloud does <laughs> have to go with the um, Nami support because that would be sort of the fourth tier for them. Meanwhile, go going. Feels like he's had enough practice with Rumble Ultimates and he can be fairly accurate with them this time around. Last time he had a pretty easy time with that massive experience lead. Yeah. Yep. See the reply there in AD carries. I think we uh, we all expected that one to come out as well, taking Corky here to match that mid game power that we're going to see over on the other side. And you know, you look at that and you think if you add in a similar rest of team to last time, you throw in with the uh, with the Jace at the end, get your poke in there as yeah. well. They've got a pretty similar composition. Obviously, Lovelin this time around on Lee Sin. Leaves basically Insect, Kha'Zix, or Jarvan, I think, at this point. Yeah, and bringing up that Jace, they were mousing over it. They don't have to lock it in this early because Ooh. of the champion pool advantage that Cool has over Corn. Yeah, they do bring in the Mundo, though, which takes a little bit longer. Uh, to become effective. It's not got good Rogue stats Club. on Mundo, that's for sure. Only one and two throughout the summer. And he's not had the most sterling of efforts and not shown it throughout the world so far. So we talked about it at the very beginning. We wondered about the Go-Going versus Cola battle. That's very much going to favor Go-Going. And he was punished early on and didn't even complete his Triforce by the end of that last matchup, which was a 25, 26 minute game. And again, OMG have a great uh, mid-game power spike, so they could do the same thing. Keep him down here and try and beat Royal Club fairly early. And a quick statistic Whoa. on Mundo, uh, by the way, a big fat 0% win rate yeah. uh, <laughs> after seven games. Not being a good tournament for Mundo. We did see there the Morgana and Jace Poor old Freddy. up there at the end for OMG. <laughs> yeah, Freddy didn't have much fun with Mundo. The other thing is that this team for Royal Club has two threats really here. It's Insect and Uzi. They're the two guys that are gonna be jumping in and pretty much everybody else is gonna try and you know have to help them survive long enough to do the damage because if either one of them goes down, they really lack damage later in the game. And we're not surprised to see Morgana also coming out for Cloudy Wills. He's fullback champion. It's actually what we were expecting for the quarterfinals until Janna suddenly became such a big threat. But the Lulu in the middle, as you mentioned, is a Interesting one, very much a tanky one. It's a diff definitely a different team from Star and Royal Club. It's a little lacking in synergy, though, I kind of feel. Well, you know, Lulu, you can buff up Kha'Zix when Insect uh, jumps in, as he inevitably will. Mundo. He's going to jump in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's going to help. If anything, that comp does help Uzi out. And as Imp just said, you know, he's going to overplay these situations and it may become a problem. We'll see how it goes, ladies and gentlemen. So game two is about to begin. Don't forget to head over to Twitter and continue to support your favorite team in this matchup by tweeting at LOL Esports and using the hashtag OMGWIN for the blue team OMG and SHRWIN for the Starhorn Raw Club on the red side. And we'll continue to check those votes shortly. Yeah, I think that's going to be going more in the direction of OMG after that convincing game one victory. But we're going to find out because we move into game number two. 
between OMG and Starhorn Royal Club. OMG got the lead and could jump all the way on to game point with this one, which would leave Royal Club in a bit of a tricky situation having to win three games in a row. And it is going to be a tricky situation for them this game around, too, because once again, OMG have got a tremendous amount of poke, and they even have in this Jace Lulu matchup. Cool again, he's going to take Exhaust because of the two damage threats on Royal Club being fairly short range. If he can exhaust Insect here, the team fights are going to be uh, pretty heavily in favor of OMG, especially if they can land some of that poke beforehand. Yeah, let's see if we have one of those crazy level ones. We can see down the bottom, Sand getting deep yeah. and getting that ward coverage. So he is going to place a ward over at the blue. So both teams got themselves the blue wards that they wanted without too much engagement between the two. We'll see whether they fancy a fight, whether there's going to be a late invade, because Star and Royal Club is still grouped up as a five and looking to go for red here. Yeah, fight, 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 I think is the name of the game here at level one. However, what are OMG doing? They've actually transferred all five men now to the bottom side of the map, and it looks like they're going to go for a delayed invade on that blue buff. They've got the ward control over the blue buff. Looks like they're going to try to set up a repeat of game number one. And an interesting start here for Insect on his red buff away from his duo lane. It's a dangerous place to start your buff uh, in the jungler situation right now. With this late invade here for OMG looking like it's going to take place, there's another very real possibility that Insect gets three buffed. Well, we'll see if it works out because his... He could quickly transfer to his blue in the opposite side. This time around, they're not going to fight for it. They have full vision. They're expecting a straight-up trade this time around, of course. With that Morgana in the jungle, you do not want to engage OMG this time around. Well, let's watch if Loveling decides to go blue to blue here and try and fight Insect over that second buff. There is already a teleport up top, so Gogoin could help him out with that defense. But he's going straight to lane. He's going straight for it. Oh, he stopped at race. He stopped okay, at race. so they are going to give it to him. Let him have his two buffs this time around. And that would mean that OMG calling out to go going. Insect's going to be on the top side of this map. Beware of an early gank from him because he's going to control north side of the map and I'm going to control bottom side of the map. So another interesting place to watch in this game as the last one as well. We talked about it so much. Uzi versus San. And of course Cloud Zero in this bottom side. Both of them going. Favorite in there as Hawk is gonna land actually on towards that. There's a nice little shield coming in. Valkyrie away, but it leaves Cloud now all on his own. It means that both of them take big chunks of damage. And this wave could keep pushing in Royal Club's uh, direction there if they want to freeze it. So they can zone out OMG for a while. Experience starve Sand and Cloud. And make it very difficult for them because going back to purchase, he only gets one long sword advantage. They're having a lane swap. They're going it straight oh, towards out the of there top. already. They're, yeah, not giving up on this one. Go, go in. Use the teleport to get the experience in that top lane. So immediately, they're losing that trade, changing things up and heading north. That does, as you mentioned earlier on, give Dragon Control that star on Royal Club. And this is the type of game that people are expecting from Royal Club. Much, much more power from the bottom lane. Uzi taking a very early advantage over Sand. They love coming down, just making sure that experience doesn't go to waste under the tower. Interested to see whether they actually try and shut down Cola here and bring Loveling up there before he hits that level six point. Try and kill him underneath this tower. We'll see about that as things start to, do, uh, start to develop. But we did also see Uzi and Zero recalling. They're gonna try and set this 2v2 back up in the top lane. Yep, they're gonna chase them all over the map here. But uh, once again, you have another possibility. Sun and Cloud could just recall once again as soon as they see Uzi and go for another lane swap. They don't want to meet up in the lane anymore after that early advantage Heard that going. Uzi got. <laughs> they're running away again. They so went up there, got themselves the CS, and switching straight around. The problem is go going has pushed that lane fairly heavily and is sticking around. So doesn't have the teleport again to react. Cola is down the bottom with a teleport, so he can react much quicker. But two junglers, both down here. We'll see whether they clash. Ooh. Could be that dive onto Mondo. If Insect leaves, he may just be leaving him in trouble because Go going stuck there as well. This is going to be four men in the bottom lane. And because of this second lane swap here, OMG now have everybody on the bottom side of the map with the late recall here of Uzi, they do have advantage and they can force something. 
Diving this Mundo right now, pretty dangerous still. Gonna and they, go for cool. They're hesitant to start up that Dragon. Insect is in a, a little bit of a tentative situation here because the vision is definitely controlled by OMG around this bottom side as well. Yeah, they got five members down the bottom. Now we're gonna see San going in aggressive onto Cola. That's gonna force him away. Uzi's back into base, but there's four Whoa. members right in here. And Cola's caught out of position this time around. He's in trouble. They're gonna collapse on it. They do have Insect Zero as support. That is enough to keep them away. And the briefcase on Go going slows him down, but this is a good buy. Star and Rogue, have they've slowed them down enough. The rest of the team are coming in, and once Uzi gets there, you know they want to fight. Cool's here first, though, so five members of OMG. Oh, big chunk blast coming through as well. It's going to be insane. Now they focus. Cool tries to dive in there, but Zero, he lands the hook, but that only baits the rest of OMG to pile up. <laughs> Uzi comes in. Look how low Sam has gone there. He falters away from danger, and I think that OMG say a big fat no. Nope, we have to leave here. But what do they leave behind? Actually, three calls for Royal Club as well, so it's going to be back to lane for Uzi and Zero. Level four, all in, 5v5 five five team fight for both teams here. Nobody goes down, but OMG did get a tremendous amount of vision inside the Royal Club jungle. But their bottom lane, once again, gonna be fairly far behind here. Whereas OMG, trying to shove in some experience and money into Go Going's pockets and rely on that rumble. Get him level six, six as early as they can. Get those power spikes out as quickly as possible at the moment. It is keeping actually fairly even, but the big difference is the fact that Uzi had a lot longer in that top lane and that's given him a bit of a big CS differential. We'll see how that works out as the dragon fight progresses because, of course, with the rumble in there, you'd expect them to want to fight for it. It does give them that early advantage. Cool and Corn, we haven't seen a great deal about them because they've both been pretty much keeping about their business. They both joined in the fight, but Star on Road Club, they're going to push the pace here. They want to get this dragon, and it looks like it's going to be theirs. Yep, they've got the dual lane bottom. They have the positional advantage. Pretty easy dragon for them to juggle here. OMG are just going to try and answer by quickly shoving in the turret, getting some damage on it. See if he can get the shot class steal. Too early. Too, too early. This is a problem, though. The top lane, you talk about Cola. There is a red buff steel coming on as well from Lovelink. Equalizer being used, so he's going to try and root around and go for Cola. I want to point out something that OMG did here. This is basically the opposite situation. Well, first they're going to go for this dive, so we'll see how that turns out. Nope, flash, they get a flash. Okay, so they did exactly the opposite of what Royal Club did last game. When Royal Club were outmanned around the Dragon, they still all went over there to try and contest it, try and steal it away, and they ended up losing even more. OMG this time around, they don't even bat an eyelash at that Dragon. They take top pressure, they invade top, get a buff steal, and they get go going to farm up the bottom lane. So they farm everywhere but Dragon, they don't waste any time walking over to it. Well, they know the red buff is being stolen away by Insect. This time, they don't want to let it go. Cool's going to try and stick around. Shock Blast. Oh, he caught the little what lizard. What a hero. <laughs> yeah, the little lizard took the full face smack in there. Cool cannot go that way around. He's going to walk into four members. Uzi backs off, and the lane switches come back around. This time around, Sun and Cloud were looking to move into Uzi and Zero. They feel a little bit more comfortable now. They're getting closer to six, but Uzi's backed off. Uzi, when they do eventually meet up here, Uzi is going to punish them. He's already pretty far ahead. He does have experience and gold advantage. And finally, they are going to get back down into that lane to meet up. Level 6, as you said, is going to be great for Corky. So hopefully, they can rush it before Uzi does arrive. So let's have a look as we approach 10 minutes of this game, how the game overall stands. No kills as of yet. Didn't think I'd be saying that, to be honest. Yeah. Nine minutes in. 1-0 in towers thanks to that top outer turret being taken down by OMG. And just a couple of hundred gold really separates these two teams at this stage. Very close so far. A couple hundred gold, a lot of vision advantage though for OMG. They've got a tremendous amount of wards down in Royal Club's territory after pretty much every lane swap, every invade leaving behind a few. And a real deep pink that Lovely put up there as well. We just see him coming in to try and see if he can find something here. Real deep pink on the red buff area that he put down, which is going to give Go Going a lot of freedom in that top lane. Yep, they've been able to alert Go Going up there. Jungler pressure is down bottom. Insects accounted for. So you can continue to pressure this Mundo up top. They're just keeping him around. Blue once again. Well, they hook Cloud, but 
no follow through, unsurprisingly. Vision on the blue. They're gonna try to steal this one away. Can they take it? Kazix has come in. And OMG backed away for a moment there. Both got smite available, so rather than going over to the mid laners, this could end up in the hands of one of these junglers. Big shot blast coming through there. Can they finish off? No. Royal oh, oh. falls them away. There's the one. He goes on to Whoa. low. He's finished off instantly there by Uzi. The rest of OMG have to run away now. But Insect not messing around. Dives in. Gets the double slow. There's a push from Uzi. Good equalizer will come down. Cloud though will drop in the end, and that will be a two for nothing. One thing goes different in the early game, and Royal Club Sal of the aggressive early moves does look way better. Get the first teleport off, get the first damage off there onto Loveling, and they're able to pick up the kill. However, before that, OMG were slowly getting leads in the top and the mid side. Cool kept shoving up the mid into the turret, and Go Going was doing the same top. Fresh hook from zero, starting everything off. Working out well for them, we thought. A Thresher or a Janna, they're going to be highly contested and being up there in the first couple of picks. Red buff cleared out, but it looks like a collapse on the mid turret this time. Go going and cool ready and waiting. You can see Zero was there. They're about to back away. Corn was pretty low. They were considering the dive, but Loveling was the only one shoving the wave, so they didn't have the minions coming in quick enough. They're still ready to go for this as Corn commits to defending. He will be walking into a trap. Instead, Go Going is going to find Cola. Cola going to get burned down here. Has to back away from this one. The rest of Star and Royal Club do collapse, but the minions get the turret. Zero edging forward there and trying to get a cheeky hook off as well, I think, while the rest of the team were catching up, but not quite to be. So, Infinity Edge almost complete. Oh, God, Cola, what is he doing this time around? The ultimate's not going to be enough. Can't get away from it. And will get burned down by Go Going and Lovely. That pink ward is paying dividends for them in this top area. Finally, you know, all this vision that OMG have been keeping up inside, deep inside this World Club jungle does pay off for a kill for them. Catching out Mundo and keeping him from completing, looks like his spirit visage here early, even though he's only against Rumble and Corky magic damage. Sun is two levels behind that Abuzi as well at this stage. Probably going to sting that BF sword going to be causing problems. There's blue buff given over to Cool, so no fight this time over the spawns of that, but we can see that San sat behind these turret, just trying to get rid of these minions as quickly as possible so that Uzi can't go aggressive onto him. And if you look at the CS, 116 to 90. Nice little lead for Uzi with that kill as well. Amounts to just under a thousand gold between those two AD carries. Yeah, it's a it's a differential that we were expecting and has happened throughout the season in the LPL. Uzi, a much stronger laner than San. San's always had that weak lane, but he always comes back strong. He's good in the team fights. His positioning is generally sound. And the fact that he is 0, zero, zero yes, he's behind, but he will catch up. Once that Triforce is completed, the item starts stacking up. It's going to be down to shutting down Uzi, though, for OMG. And at the moment, I think they may have the answer. Cool is coming down. He didn't want to go start the fight, but that ward will spot them early. And I think this is going to be a whole lot of nothing here. Yeah, cool walks in there. They got it warded up. They do spot that Lulu is headed towards that bottom side, but the damage from Uzi just too much at this point. They're calling, oh. absolutely hammering them down. And that means that they may not be able to hold on to this bottom turret. Thankfully, Cool did stick around there too help things out, that force Royal Club to back away somewhat, but let's not forget, Dragon did just spawn back in. It's a dual prompt push as well, you can see Corn and Insect shoving that wave on towards the mid tower, which is completely uncontested so far. Cole, of course, gone down to cover that one off, that's going to be a, at least half the hit point shredded off this, and that Dragon up, this is a big, big advantage for Star and Royal Club. Yeah, so they go for a little bit safer route, they shove in mid and bottom, instead of going for the Dragon, because they're a little bit worried about the Jace point, Poke at this point in the game, blue buff on cool would be devastating for this team inside the dragon. Uh, Lulu can't even shield all of that poke, and Insect on Kha'Zix is fairly squishy still, can't tank up the dragon. They need, they would have to get complete vision control around it to be able to do anything. There it is. Go going has yet to go back and buy, so despite the fact he's got that two level advantage and a big CS differential gold mount up, he hasn't spent it. So if they were to go into this dragon fight, you can see the Infinity Edge now completed by Uzi, coming back from base. Star and Royal Club are going to have a massive power advantage. Plus, both of them are going to have to go back to base anyway, probably pretty soon here, because neither of them have their teleports up yet. Both teleports are synced. 
and they would need to refresh before this fight starts out. Gogoing was trying to get that level 11 before it started, yeah. but looks like he's going to have to back off a wave ahead because teleports are coming up now, so he wants to purchase. Everybody's setting up for the poke to try and draw in Royal Club, and this is where OMG want to pull ahead and take advantage. Zero, though, pretty dangerous here. On top of a ward, could be up to Cloud to get things started. Both teams actually send in a couple of men Ooh, back into lane well. there to try and push them through. Needlessly large rod on top of the haunting guys for go going. That might be enough to deal with the fact that San doesn't have his Trinity Force finished. The dragon has been pulled out. There are the TPs. They're going to come around the side. Zero gets caught. Oh. Oh, 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 Can he safeguard away? They're going to focus on Gorn. Have they got too much on Twarty? Wild Guys will keep him alive for a while. But is it enough? That's the question. There's going to be the Shroud. Oh, he caught Tyler out. The Equalizer splits the team. Cool is lower than bad, but he's turning around. Goes on to it. Go going. Flashes in there. They get one. Sand went low, but the binding managed to keep him alive. They've turned it around now on zero. Lublin will get that one. Uzi will surely find himself a kill on this top side to bring it back to a three for one. But OMG coming up big there. Yeah, and OMG now with everybody up still here except for Go Going still have vision control of the Dragon Pit. They can get the objective afterwards after winning that fight as well. Corn on the opposite Don't side, isolated. Be really so confident in that. Uzi is coming, Kola is coming. They want to pick up some exit kills here. The Dragon has gone down, they're going to give chase, but that acceleration gate will help OMG out. They're all backing away on a ward, but they should be safe. And all that, San hadn't got that Triforce complete. We thought the power was maybe with Star One, but no. Well, Korn here, just completely on the other side of the rest of his team, split one and four for Royal Club at this early dragon fight. And even though they chase off OMG, five members can collapse and focus all their damage. Cola gets uh, bound and then ulted by Rumble very early here. And even though they split everybody up, Sand getting out with barely any life, and they're able to pull off all of the little skirmish battles that happen on the side after they take down Korn. Insect gonna walk away from this one, does get the smite down, gets himself the red buff. He spotted that ward as well, finally. They yep. see that ping ward over there. He actually decided not to clear it out there, but he did ping right on top of it. So they spotted that that ward is there. We'll see what they do. I mean, you know, there's always that age old argument that if you know where a ping ward is, leaving it on can sometimes be even trickier than actually just taking it down, killing it off because you can move around it and maybe lull OMG to a false Whoa. sense of security. There is actually Cloud getting completely caught out here. He's dead and, wow, we don't even need to watch it. Mm, that's the wrong side of the jungle. OMG have control over the top side of the map here and Cloud getting a little bit antsy there. Wanted to try and get blue side as well. Kind of greedy. Mm. Does end up costing him a kill. And for Royal Club here, if they come back, if they're gonna come back here in game two and answer it up, even this up, this is gonna be on the back of Uzi. Already Infinity Edge completed, got some extra crit in. with the zeal, and he's moving up towards the top side. Four members all moving up towards the top. Can they get on towards them? I think they realize that their good ward coverage does pay off and they step away. As you mentioned about that ping ward, they know it's there, trying to use it to their advantage. OMG did have some very good ward coverage, but again, Cloud getting greedy, not using the buddy system we've seen. You've got to follow through. You've got to have somebody with you if you want to get that wall control. Speaking of buddies, go going. Lovely both there. And Uzi decided wisely not to go too far down that middle lane. Meanwhile, OMG trying to put some pressure onto that bottom lane. Another, uh, wow. le another wave is coming in. And OMG are running down towards his bottom side. Maybe not to get the kill. Uh -oh. But to uh -oh. at least the turret actually caught has stuck around. Woo! There's a lot of them this is why Thresh is so important for this team. There's no warning here from Royal Club. There's no early warning system. When OMG make a move across the map and they change their objective, it's there's no early system for Royal Club to tip them off and they have to play reactively. So far it's worked out because they got their kill on Cloud and they were able to lantern out uh, Korn there. But that's not something you want to be able to rely on. You want to be able to rely on actually setting up your defensive vision. And they do get a couple now, at least on the blue side. It is very much a much closer game than the previous one. Still just approaching the 20-minute mark now. Just a couple of hundred gold between the two. Mondo on Cola. Getting stronger, no doubt about it. The Spirit Visage and Ninja Tabi are now completed. 
Still been a fairly null point though in this game, whereas Go Going is definitely one of the tipping points for OMG every time these fights come down. As he gets stronger and stronger, that death cap, or will it be the Zonyas that will come out soon? Will be a big power point for him. Yeah, and it gets really worrisome for Rogue Club, even though the gold is so close right now. OMG coming up towards those power points. It's so hard for Royal Club to deal with them because Royal Club have not taken hard CC besides just skill shot reliant things. If you don't hit this hook, if you don't get a good Lulu ultimate on somebody for the knockup, then they have very, very little hard engage here for Royal Club. And they're going to have to deal with constant shock blast spam, corky missile spam, and rumble ultimate. Man. If you're looking at Insect then to jump in and for that wild growth to really get those knockups, but the way the Insect, you know, building now and always <laughs> building, he's not going to last very long when he jumps into fights. He goes in and he pretty much dies. They, he's, they're going to need him to live because he, as we said, he's their secondary damage source here. They need to squeeze out all the damage they can from Insect plus Uzi. Korn's going to do his best and Lulu's uh, mid-game damage isn't much to laugh at. Definitely going to pull his weight here for a while. So something we saw through the quarterfinals, of course, was the split pushing coming out from Cool, which is looking to set up again, maybe. And up against Cola, how's that going to work out? The, the, a Jace up against the Mundo. I mean, looks like he is going to always have the support of the sides. You can see Cloud trying to get that ward coverage. This time around, Cool is following him. They are keeping together, so the buddy system working out for them. But it's something we've seen more importantly, Star on Rogue Club not doing too much of the, the split pushing. For the engage. Oh, Insect trying to get in there, but OMG playing that one very defensively, instantly backing away as we saw them starting to collapse around. But OMG got superior vision on that bottom side and they get blue. themselves the blue buff. Cloud quick there on that black shield. And that was able to keep him from being CC'd and pulled in with the hook. So nicely done there for OMG. And 15 seconds only until the next dragon comes into play. They yeah. want to fight. They want to fight. You can see Go going heads down here. They're getting in position. They're going to push up. They want to shove the mid lane before they go that dragon. Well, that blue buff is a really big boon for either team in the siege game here. Shock Blast going to constantly. Oh, there they got it. They're going on court. They try and catch him out there. Oh, who's he caught with the dark pointing? Quick switch target, but San had no vision of him. There's going to be Go going. He's caught out. Has to pop the equalizer down. Cold wow. stood on top of him and he's got no support. Cool comes around the side. Is he going to gather in time? No, gets the kill. Insect hits in and out. But Cool can turn around. He tries to drop the hammer. Instead, the down point, he catches on Uzi once again. And OMG claps. There's lots of things going on everywhere. Yo. OMG totally split. Coming into that final lovely. Decides to dive in. Zero hit with a binding. Insect goes in once again. Oh! And there is Sand now going deep. Already got the double. Can he make it? He has. Of kill. He sure can with the big one. Now can he take down the even bigger one? Mundo running away to the side, and I think he's actually going to survive that one. A very messy fight that, funnily enough, OMG just about come out ahead of in the end. Oh, man. We didn't talk too much about Cool's Jace in the last game because there was such a big lead for OMG, but man, did it show up really big here in that skirmish. Able to get in and deal tremendous amount of damage from the time that Gogoin got caught all the way up until the end there. And bringing that Exhaust Summoner spell so good for this team. So initially, OMG, they catch out on the side here, uh, Korn. They get the Lulu ultimate down. They get the binding. Uh, but on the opposite side of the map, Go Goings left with the numbers disadvantage. And Rogue Club do a great job. They collapse on him. They are going to get that one kill. Cool in position with that blue buff that they just stole. Watch how he's able to uh, use the exhaust to deter Uzi, then flash back out and get back into the fight to dish out this damage. Sand doing the exact same thing this entire time. Leveling does go in for the kill onto Uzi, which as we said, once of those once one of those DPS sources goes down, it's it's gonna be curtains. Cool gets the home run kill onto Kha'Zix, and that's the end of that fight. Insect tried. If he could have just got that one on Cool, could have got the reset, maybe would have taken down Cloud. It could have been so beautiful for him. Wasn't to be though. Very, very Instead, close team fight. Very, very tight team fight. They're going once again though. It's a battle for the red buff. And Star Wars Rook don't want to give it up. OMG do catch on. Oh! Cool blows Insect up, but this is the danger as they dive in. Lovely to the back, the equalizer down, they're going for Cola. He's 
the tank, he's right on the team, but he has to take the lantern to go away. Meanwhile, Zag trying to lock down oh. one. The massive damage does go in. Oh. Another big bomb to finish him off. Meanwhile, Cola, uh, go going, sorry, at the back. Just in their faces this entire time. That will be another 2-0. There's a hook, but that won't be a kill. Back for Royal Club. This Corky Jays Rumble mid-game is just devastating here. This time around, they got a great Rumble ultimate. Cool had already taken out Insect before the fight even started. And then Go Going was able to take Uzi completely out of the fight, just zone him. Insect annihilated there. Cool is too strong, and that might be a focus next game. And this replay goes on for a long time, as that last fight did. But just wanted to point out, if you look at the OMG side of the map, there's basically no wards down, just a deep pink, if you can even call them deeper, in the river at this point of things. The other side of the map's got more wards than your average yeah. hospital. And that's interesting, <laughs> because if you do look at it, that was where the fight all happened. OMG went into that fight with wards ready to go. They've now got all pink wards all picked up, everybody on OMG ready to fight again. You look at Star on Royal Club, they're not going into these fights, they're not getting the vision. Well, they did this time around, they got pink wards and they get a pick. Yep, he's dead. Corn able to finish that one off and went straight over the top of that pink ward, which Zero will be trying to clear things out. They finally spotted that one, but that wasn't in the book here for OMG. And actually, Royal Club will take a turret off that as well. If you look at the goal, just there's only 2,000 separating these teams. We're 26 minutes in. Such a different game to game number one. It was such a great isolated call there from Royal Club. They pick up three pink wards, make a move to the top side of the map where there's a weak turret to take an objective, and they also get a pick for it. So they just got a lot of comeback gold there, and it's something that they have to do if they're gonna get back in this game. They had to control that area that they went to go make their move at with that pink wards. But it is the big differential we've seen between obviously Samsung White, who are sat in the final, and the China teams is They'll go for a fight over anything. That was over a red buff. They went all in 5v5. No objective was to be gained from that one, whereas you look at maybe the chess moves well in advance from the Samsung Whites and Samsung Blues. We'll see whether OMG do start adapting that because it's something they fell into in the group stage, but they picked up in the quarterfinal stage. They started to develop. And you can see the gold differential is very much building for OMG, but there's a little spike. Oh, hello. They did this against... Nachi and White Shield, a cheeky little quick Baron in game one. This time around, I don't think they're going to get caught out. They're going in, they're trying to catch out Starhorn, but it, it is a poke game. Oh, Uzi took the full brunt of that blast. Double scrying orbs picked up for Royal Club because they lack the vision, and they lack the power to even move into the territory where they need vision. It's too risky for them to even place the wards now. So they've got double scrying Ooh. orbs that are both on cooldown. Pretty much they're just going to be shoved into their turrets at this point, though. The ridiculous poke here from OMG. Very strong mid-game. That's the real danger, that they get poked too low and can't then fight them back. I'm assuming that Uzi's thinking Bloodthirster next. I could do with a shield, and I could also, you know, do with regening some of that life back once I actually get beaten down from a distance. There's an equalizer. Oh, oh, they go for zero. Oh, he gets kicked, kicked over. There's a wild growth from corner to side, but they get themselves oh, an ultimate. At the end of the day, Korn's ulti's down. Two. Will OMG be using that one? Yeah, well, good play there. Two for one, though. It was go going and lovely that kick over. Basically gave him the freedom to get out there. Uzi tries to turn it around. Korn gonna get focused on this time. A little bit of damage back on him. Gets the light line, catches some damage on San, and suddenly saw Royal Club are the ones shoving OMG back. Well, they're trying to take advantage of this opening. They saw the two cooldowns not gonna be available for OMG and they tried to pressure it. However, OMG easily able to wave clear here, and they don't lose anything, able to keep up their control of the Baron Pit. So, I think this brief respite in action is not gonna last very long. 20 seconds until the next Dragon comes up. Gold remains a 2,000 lead for OMG. Tied up in turrets, almost tied in kills as well. AD carries, look at that, 4 0 3. Once again, OMG, I'm gonna sound the Baron alarm and get in there once again, <laughs> trying to two man it. <laughs> whoop, whoop, it's going off, and like, immediately Zero comes in and puts that ward down. Ready and waiting. Sand's not here, but neither is Cola. Cola's got that teleport. He's coming in, he's going straight into the pit. OMG peeling out. Run away, run away. OMG trying to evacuate here, but Cloud oh! will be the sacrifice.
Rachel left as he equalized it going down. Then Core Loveless, he will have to flash away. Go going, trying to hammer them down, but he's all right. Slay the people. Whoa! Goes over. A three man knockoff from the Wild Grove will secure Core the kill on to Core, and they're not done just yet. Sam trying to batter them back there with the Rockets, but he needs to now run away. In fact, he has to flash away. OMG lose three. The Baron Alarm drew them yeah. in once again, and it might cost them dearly. Yo, oh, well, they're still gonna go at it here. Looks like Corky on the outside might be able to poke down one. Loveling is still alive, so the smite is still there, but Sam's gonna get caught. Oh, by oh, oh one more tip, he gets away, and that may well just be Baron. Loveling hovering off the side. They're all too aware of this one. Trying to get in there. Can he manage to squeak his way in? No! Didn't get the steal down. Can't get a kill either. Insect cleans it up. The Star Horn Royal Club are back in control. In classic fashion here. How can they how can they toss this game right back the other way? Well, it's with the Baron. The alarm went off, he said. They tripped it and they definitely paid for it. Indecisive in this Baron too. They don't immediately run out of the pit when they see the teleport come in. Cloud does not have the Zanyas ready and he goes down instantly. Then it's a great cleanup. And you get to see that synergy between Mundo and Lulu. Even when Mundo does get low, pops his ultimate and he gets to survive with the Lulu ultimate, buying him time to regenerate. He's one of the, that's one of the best great frontline combos there. And it allowed the Insect and Uzi damage from the backline to constantly deal their damage without threat. Well, I've got no idea how this game's gonna turn out. That was that swing coming in once again. This 2K lead now for Royal Club. There's a dragon on the table as well for whoever dares even go down towards that side of the map. Funnily enough, all the wards have timed out on that side by now. There's no one really got vision of it until there was a cloud, I believe, put, yeah, a pink ward in the back of that dragon pit. So. They will be headed down there and basically free goal for whoever decides to head down. Unless they, of course, both head down and we get a big fight. And then there's some gold for everyone else when they get into a crazy 5v5. But it looks like it's OMG yeah. that do go there and will decisively take this dragon. But are they going to lose anything in mid lane? I don't think so. One thing's for sure, though, that OMG were very indec indecisive in that fight. They didn't really go. Cool didn't commit to anything. San wasn't really sure where the hell he should be. So. Bit of a warning sign for OMG fans, honestly. Star on Royal Club suddenly knew what they're doing. When the power fight goes off, their alarms go off. Everybody knows you're drilled on that one, that what to do. And OMG seemed a little caught off guard. At the moment, though, they have to just play defensive duties while this Baron buff wears off. Well, they do have to worry about this Mundo getting out of hand because Mundo can stand in the front line. He can take Corky Rockets. He can take Shock Blast. He can even take Dark Bindings for the team. Uh, on the front line, if he gets tanky enough. Well, he's certainly on good, his way, isn't Good he? switch over here. Yep. Baiting them top with a little bit of a feint, get a little bit more damage here on mid. I think that's going to be the turret as well. You can see, as you mentioned, Cola just standing on that big front line. The Cullen once again, drawing them down, and they rotate back, up. back to the top, and that's going to be another turret for them because OMG can't get in position quick enough. No, no messing around here from Royal Club, and we'll see if OMG can weather this storm, trying to poke down the minions as quickly as possible here, using the rockets, using the shock blast. Gonna go for Cole here, go, going down to half. There's a lantern out oh. of safety, and well, they've used the equalizer to try and strip them out. Cloud uh, use his as well, so really not a lot left up here for Royal Club. Yeah, even though the Lulu ultimate was burned really early here, they can easily just continue the siege. For OMG is what I actually <laughs> meant there. And there is Royal Club finishing off that tower. And let's not forget, that was Amundo with his ultimate running, his Sadie's up, with the shields from zero. Basically everything thrown at him. And of course, don't forget the Baron buff on top. They couldn't dent him, they couldn't take him down. He's just completed a Thorn Mail now. So Cool and San, they need to start switching targets because he's just gonna stand in front of them and cause some grief. And I'm not sure if they can get away from him anymore. Got to worry about uh, that late game Mundo. We always like to say one of the best late game scaling tanks in the game. OMG, they they loaded their comp with all this mid game power, and they kind of gave away the most crucial point in the game there with that Baron. You have to also give uh, props to Royal Club for that decisive call. They were pressured. They were down. They had one ward inside, and they were able to pull off the play, commit to that Baron, catch them not only pick up the kills, but also the Baron afterwards. And this is what Royal Club have to run with. So, 
Let's see if they can get down to this inner bottom turret, the final inner turret that's left standing. Cola that will pretty much do that all on his own. Randwin, Stormmail, Spirit Visage. It's Uzi and Korn just sit back and wait for that mid lane to get pushed back up there. Bottom lane will be pushed away by Go Going as well. So with Baron now down, you see what OMG's plan is. Because this one in gold still pretty damn tight, but there are some big items starting to come in here. Specifically a lot of armor items that are gonna make Cool in particular, a lot less effective. Yeah, he does, uh, he rushed his early armor penetration, uh, so that will be pretty good for him. But uh, also, you know, him and Corky gonna have to deal with that. The big thing for Corky is getting that Blade of the Ruined King versus a Mundo, pretty much a crucial item. Being able to do the percentage health damage as well as the lifesteal, because you have to have lifesteal when dealing with a frontline tank that has uh, that blade, or the thorn mail because it's going to return damage to you before any mitigation. Benji's Veil was picked up by Uzi. Void Staff's been picked up as well by both Go Going and Korn this time around. Another blue flask as well. With that Baron up in 90 seconds, Star Wars will absolutely want to be in position to get this fight down, but OMG, they're trying to get some vision coverage. Star and Rogue Club, they're the ones doing the pushing and the prodding. They are forcing them away. Kill Coca-Cola trying to speed in there. Insect flanking as well with the Void Spikes. Trying to catch them out. Cool. Doing what they can, but suddenly, them big shock blasts, they're not making the devastating dents they were before. The Star and Rogue Club, they're pushing back. Yeah. yeah. They've got that huge front line Mudo. He's at level 17, highest level in the game now. People are giving Cola a very hard time for his individual performances. But this time around, Rogue Club are really going to have to use him as the point man. Yeah, I mean, all he needs to do is basically stand in the way, right? He's like, well, normally this would get me killed, but at Mundo, this far into the game, I'm pretty damn strong. That it's may nothing. be just what I need to do. And yeah, with the shields especially, they can, can see that they can still do damage to him, oh. but do you want to really be focusing everything at Cola just to start to get him low? And then he pops his ultimate on, then he gets a wild growth, and you realize that Really, you've done nothing with your time there. We've got 17 seconds until the next Baron Ooh. does come up. There's the hook, doesn't quite land on Sam. Who's he taking a quick shot blast there? He is still easily dented by Cool, but with the big shields coming out of both Zero and Korn to give him defensive coverage, he is very much safe and will still continue to be aggressive, especially with that Banshee's Veil sticking on him now. Yeah, let's see about that next team fight because OMG have all of the percent health damage and penetration that they need to take down Amundo. We'll see if they can actually pull it off though. As you mentioned, all those shields are gonna help. But you know, Landry's plus Void Staff for the Rumble. And as we said, you know. Oh, they can't see the ward. It's, it's just out of range of the pick. Oh. Just out of range. They think they're being sly. They think they're being coy, but Korn is well aware. He can teleport straight into this pit. They tripped the alarm and again. Has started. The alarm is going off. Zero comes around. Then the teleport. They immediately, this time, back out. But they're split once again. They're being flanked. It's the same fight over again here. They're forced away. Cloud is very low. Cola is going to beef it up for the front. Here comes Insect. Sonya's used by Go Go. Cola go low. He has to flash. Zero's low. Corn has wild growth on himself. Sam surely going to oh. be big. Cole's still healthy as well. They seem to have forced Royal Club away for now. There's another shot blast to come through. Where are Royal Club going to go? They're going to shove mid here, try and force OMG to react to them and pull the pressure away from Baron. Now, I have to say, even though OMG didn't die in this one and they were able to get out of that Baron pit, this is not the type of game that OMG want to play. They have the advantage in the poke, yet they keep on pinning themselves up inside this Baron pit, corralling themselves for Royal Club to collapse on them. They do not siege up this secondary line of turrets and try and use the rumble, plus all the poke that they have. <laughs> they see the war this time around. They've gone back to it. This time around, they sweep it out. They're going to start off the Baron. They do no the insects back. There's no smite available, but the call it is. It comes Uzi around the side and puts a hell of a lot of 
of damage on OMG and forces them away once again. Why are they sticking around? They have to back away, but they don't want to risk Star Horn Royal Club taking that Baron as they come in and clear the ward. Yeah. Good ping, finds the ward. That's the same ward they used against Natchin White Shield that Natchin White Shield missed. The Star Horn Royal Club, well aware of it. You got to look at all the nooks and crannies of that Baron pit. There's a couple of shadows. They've cleaned it out, though, and now it's Royal Club's Baron to start up. Collapsing, though, here comes the fight. Well, you know they're going to go low. They are going to try and push back. There is Lovely getting hooked up. Can they get into the Baron? Go! Oh. The equalizer of the Baron, though, <laughs> goes over to Royal Club, but they're trapped in the pit. Can they get away? Go, go, it's melting Uzi. Cool down, it's Korn going to be the focus. Intake, though, gets a reset, gets out of the pit, and they leave Cola all on his own. Wow. It'll take a while, but they take him down, and it's a three for two. Baron, though, for Royal Club. Woo. All right, now... <laughs> They actually won't return to the Baron pit, though, for sure, because it's, for down, sure. it's down now. Oh, not for six minutes, at least. There you go. All right, but it was taken there. Good smite from Royal Club. They're able to take it and get out with only the three for two, so definitely worth it for them. But once again, sh uh, corralling themselves inside this Baron. It was a good hook, but they weren't able to instantly kill Love Link. Oh, yes, they did. Never mind. He went down. Everybody gets trapped up inside the pit. OMG able to do a lot of good damage with Cool jumping into the back line. And then almost surviving by hitting Cola out. But very good hop there from Insect, getting the kill, reset into an escape. Crazy Three. fight. That cloud and they're again gonna... coming down. This dragon will be going across. He's on his own. Can't get involved in this. I don't think he realizes how many members of Star and Royal Club are nearby. That will get taken and run away from. So, Star and Royal Club still with a 4,000 gold advantage. Despite Baron going their way, OMG are the ones you would think in control now, but well, I'm not sure. Yeah, the thing is, OMG were 100% in control before the first Baron because they've got this team of very strong Pope champions and they didn't really play to the strengths of that team that they built. Can he get the smite? Yep. Lovelink does get the smite, so almost all the neutral objectives taken there for Royal Club to get back in this game with Baron and Dragon, but they weren't able to hold on to their red. Not as big of a deal. But yeah, OMG, uh, they forced the little skirmish team fights there, and Royal Club definitely were happy to take them. Took advantage, and with some good neutral objective control, they're right back in this game. Let's see if they hold up to the siege now. Well, let's find out here. Is that for it's gonna be the focus. There is a hook from Zero that doesn't quite connect for them. They're pushing against the Baron Up Star on Royal Club right now. You might consider it a little bit dangerous. And Royal Club decide they're gonna go for it. There's the hook. It lands onto the shield and up cloud though. And Cola, he's trying to get in there, but there's just too many slows, too many roots. He's gonna turn back around though and keep going. No, he doesn't get the slow onto Sand, which means OMG themselves will now try and turn it around as well. They're looking for the perfect chance to land the equalizer at the moment Star on Rook trying to flank around you see insect lands the voice point gets the slow back down on towards go going but another dark point in keeps landing Uzi that's gonna be a good call in it catches a lot of damage on cloud cloud making down to nothing look at uh -oh. in trouble insect flanks around they got the slow the hook on go go equalizer does not come out and that's gonna be an ulti Ben Lackley missing there as Star on Rook the drive chase on corn can he get in can he get the slow down going for cool not got it available, but Insect once again dives forward. Void's back's not quite got the range. Cola, tank up the damn tower, let them hit it. They can finish that one off easily. They're still trying to collapse, though, and take out OMG as they go. Corn going forward. San will force him back, but there's still five men from Royal Club pushing. So going's not up for 35 seconds or so. Cloud in 20, they might be losing the inhibitor. These are big, big death timers in Star on Royal Club. They may try and finish off. They're definitely going to take one in here. They're going to rotate around, maybe go towards that top lane, but what a great push coming out. Uzi, not done yet. Cullen that started everything off once again coming out. And well, starts out from OMG pushing an inner and they lose an in him. Royal Club, again, the decisive style got them back in this game and they chase even after the Mundo ultimate is down, they get the necessary poke on Cloud to draw out his Zanyas before he can get his ultimate. And once that's out of the picture, four versus five, OMG just have to turn tail and run. Bottom inhibitor being down means yes, Next time we do see the Baron up, Royal Club are going to have an advantage. They could pressure down bottom, get those super minions chugging along, and force OMG into a bad spot, who really, they missed their mid-game chance.
So, 45 minutes about to hit the clock. Panic. 16 30. Lots of kills, lots of action in this one. And the gold lead is about, about 7,000 at the moment for Royal Club. But that Baron buff, after wearing out, will probably be the, the big magnet, to be honest, that brings these two teams back together once again. We see their bloodthirster for cool. Could be interesting as this one all develops further on. We've got Sonya's on, a couple of men on, three men actually. Corn having one as well. Trinity Force added in with an infinity. Ooh, no Mundo. King. Mundo isn't there. He's top lane, but are they going to try the fight? Even so, if OMG can start a fight, even if Mundo does have teleport, that's the best way for OMG to start a fight having that extra time of the channel of the teleport for them to do damage to everybody except for Mundo. Basically, OMG have to kill everybody oh. around Mundo before cleaning him up. Here come the super minions, though, and Royal Club yep. keep up the pressure mid. Cloud was forced to the fountain a moment ago. He's on down on hit points, which is giving a big advantage, but Lovely goes leaping in. The kick on zero does next to nothing, and they force him away. That's going to be another in him. They may go for the game here, Joe. They're pushing on go go they got him. They got him, Sans getting low. Can he get away? They're binding one. Maybe some people lose it. Go in. Blown down by Cool, though. But can they hold up to the base? Super minions are there. They've already lost one Nexus turret. The second's going to fall. Cool's trying desperately. This is dangerous. But Insect having to go at the back. They've got Cloud to pop his onions. The Nexus down is less than half. The shutdowns come in. Ooh. And it's Royal Club that win game number two and tie up the series. A risky, risky finish. Remember, OMG cleared out. In a similar circumstances, that would have been 40 to 50 second dead time as they may well have been able to drive up the game. But we are all square once again. Some big performances this time around from Starhorn Royal Club. And you know what, Cola were in a pretty damn good performance this time around. He did his job, he was that big tanky front man. And Uzi, the aggression early on, the pressure he put on San and Cloud, forced them out of lane at that very early stage, what, level two, level three. And that started all the rotations, all the switching, all the lane swapping. And OMG struggled from there on out. Yep, the biggest thing going back into the locker room with OMG, they're gonna be discussing that mid-game Baron. That's pretty much the yep. topic there for them because they, they had so much control. And then you can't do that against Royal Club especially because Royal Club is gonna jump on it. You know, they ping and they go. So that was the thing that we said about last game, you know? If you're behind, let them have the dragon. If you don't do it at Baron as often, but Royal Club have shown that they will fight every single time, whether yeah. 5K ahead or 10K behind. And if you end up losing out on the Baron, that's how the things switch around. And 